Hi, this is Irish Eyes True Crime. Hi everyone, welcome back to Irish Eyes True Crime. Today I'm just going to do a short video on some things that has come out since. Um, while you're waiting on the police video, because I don't know when I'll have that ready. I had a bit of a flu, so... And the husband had a tummy bug, so I'm kind of behind on a lot of stuff. So I said I'd just do a short video um, just to keep you updated. So remember back at the beginning when Nicola had been missing and a lot of us were looking at the fact that um she had shared a post about um Derek Clayton being missing as well. And, you know, there was people talking about maybe there was a link between um Derek and Paul having maybe worked together before. Now, I don't know how true that is, but it was just even the fact that like there was someone else missing and the fact that Nicola had shared it you know like a coincidence there like coincidences are rare enough like you're not going to have a heap of coincidences but um yeah there was um I seen there lately that um a man from Blackpool Blackburn sorry was missing and it was on the Lancashire police website that they needed help finding a John Eary who had been missing from Blackburn and they said then that unfortunately we have an incredible sad update for you yesterday late afternoon a man's body was found in Pleasanton area of the town we can now sadly confirm that the man is John his family are aware of the tragic development and John's death is not being treated as suspicious and a file will be passed on to his magister coroner in due course. Thank you for everyone for sharing our previous appeal. Now, when I was looking at it, I found that um, Nicola's sister Louise had commented and commented on um the person that was looking say it must have been family member or friend was sharing it looking for this person and louise cunningham had uh commented um that she couldn't share mick can you change your settings so here's another person that you know these people know that's missing and like it just Another coincidence, I don't know, like it just seems very close again. Another person that's missing and this person now is after being found dead. But leave it till what I found out today because Vicky Marie shared um, a new video. And I'm going to talk about it there now. So if you want to look at Vicky's video that she put out, but if for anyone that didn't see it, I'm going to talk about it here now as well. So, um, a 30-year-old Polish woman named Yulina Zazak, she was a vet that worked at Mai's Vets, the same vets that was on Willow's dog tag. This Polish woman was found dead with severe injuries in a hotel a few months after Nicola had passed away. So this inquest was held a few days ago. So I'm just going to read out the inquest report, a news article that had shared about the inquest. It states, a vet in her dream job bled to death after she was found 
with horrific injuries in a bat at a four-star hotel, an inquest has heard. Doctors suspected, at first, that tragic 30-year-old Yelena Sazak may have been attacked but they ultimately found no signs of third-party involvement or self-defence, the hearing was told. The owner of the Staunton Hotel in Bloomsbury, central London, discovered pale Miss Sazak lying in a bath with extreme wounds. A doctor said Miss Sazak's wounds were so severe that they appeared to have been inflicted by violent activity. But police and a pathologist independently declared there were no suspicious circumstances. The young woman's distraught parents flew over from their home in Poland to attend the inquest at St Pancras Coroner's Court on Monday, October the 23rd. Speaking outside, they said that their daughter was happy and had recently had a pay rise in her dream job and was buying furniture for her flat in Blackpool. She had moved to the UK in 2021 after qualifying as a vet in Poland. And using a friend as a translator, her dad, Henrik Sazak, said he was working as a vet and she had a pay rise. She had something to live for. She had lots of friends in Poland and she was very healthy. The young woman who worked at Mize Vets in Hamilton Langs was very close with her friends in Poland and had a strong relationship with her family. However, in the days leading up to her death, the young girl became convinced that a group of 10 people were following her and intent on harming her. The fear became so intense that she fled from Blackpool to London, even planning to fly last minute to Poland, before becoming too terrified she would be injected with poison mid-flight. At 10pm that night, Miss Sazak checked into the Staunton Hotel. She made the reservation under one name only, and paid the night porter up front in cash for a night in a ground floor room beside reception. On the next morning, the chambermaid couldn't enter the door and she called the receptionist. The inquest is heard. She couldn't get in either, but managed to get a distressed Miss Sazak to speak to her through the door. Miss Sazak asked to stay another night. The receptionist returned to the desk and telephoned Miss Sazak to say they were fully booked, but she could stay an extra half an hour before checking out. The hotel owner arrived at 10 past 12 p.m. He struggled to break into the locked door and to find Miss Sazak lying in the bath, conscious but covered in deep cuts. He called the emergency services and police discovered Miss Sazak still conscious with two sharp objects beside her and blood across the hotel room. She hadn't slept in her bed and train tickets were strewn across the hotel room floor from Preston to Manchester Airport, Preston to Liverpool and a London All Zones travel card all valid for the previous day. A bag filled with paperwork, £175 in notes and £12 in coins were also recovered. Paramedics arrived and gave her CPR in the bathroom before carrying her to reception. However, their attempts to resuscitate Miss Sazak were unsuccessful and she was pronounced dead at 1.07 p.m. Assistant Coroner Ian Potter ruled that Miss Sazak died by self-harm. Mr Potter said we can never know whether her belief was grounded in reality, 
but that it was clear she was overcome by fear and distress when she checked into the Staunton Hotel. Summarising his verdict, he said, I'm told by Yelena Sazek's mother, Lona, that she was a very nice girl with a lot of friends. It's also clear to me that she had a good and close relationship with her family. Yelena's mother, Lona, has given evidence about text messages and numerous conversations she had with Yelena between the 12th and 25th of April 2023. Those exchanges paint a picture of a fast emergent situation which rapidly escalated to what only can be described as a state of apparent despair which saw a situation where Yelena believed that she was being followed on the 24th of April 2023 by a group of up to 10 people. I have no doubt that Yelena did believe that she was being followed. What is less clear is the source of that belief, whether it was entirely based in reality or whether it was delusional either in whole or in part. In the absence of expert medical opinion regarding Yelena's mental health, which is not possible to obtain after the fact, we will never know the exact facts of the situation and her belief. However, what is clear to me is that at the time she checked into the Staunton Hotel, Yelena was in a state of some fear and distress. I have also borne in mind the nature and extent of Yelena's injuries, which were quite frankly extreme. I find that nobody inflicts injuries of that severity on themselves as a cry for help or expecting to live, particularly not someone of Yelena's educational standard. Bearing in mind that as a vet, she was more than familiar with the basics of biology and anatomy. In light of these factors, I reject the notion of accident and find that on the balance of probabilities, Yelena inflicted these injuries on herself and that she did so with the intention of taking her own life. Turning to Miss Sazek's parents, he added, all that remains Ilona and Henrik, it's for me to give you my sincere condolences for the loss of your daughter. I can't begin to imagine the pain and suffering that it has caused you. And I wish you a safe journey home. I'm just going to say, like, what the F went on there? Like, this is a... 30 year old woman like you know she's young and like had done severe training to become a vet because even more so than being a doctor a vet can be very hard exams to pass and for something like this to happen when she was after getting her dream job and a pay rise and seemed in good spirits and happy to her family and friends and out of the blue all this happens and her believing that a gang was after her like what if there was an actual gang after her or she knew something and she want they wanted her gone. Like it seems so random for her to feel this way. Even the fact that she was a vet and if she wanted to take her own life, say, she had access to medications that could have made things easier on her let's say but to take her life 
in such a violent matter. It like one wound with severity would be a very hard thing to do to yourself. But several vicious attacks on yourself. I just, I don't know. I just can't, I can't get my head around that. I just can't. Like, could you imagine, you know, stabbing yourself several times, like, or to be so violent with your body, like, it just doesn't seem natural. Nothing said at the inquest about toxicology, whether she was on drugs or if she had have been drugged. We don't know anything of that sort. Like, you know, you wouldn't know, like, if, if she, if there was gang after her and they had drugged her or anything like that. There's nothing said about that in the inquest. Without drugs, could you imagine doing that to your own body without drugs? It just makes it even more suspicious. I'm sorry, but there's something seriously wrong around that area. Like, definitely something going on, like, with likes of this happening. Like, even the fact of all the other people that have disappeared and been found dead in non-suspicious circumstances, not too far away from that area either. But even just to put the link to Nicola Bully here, with this woman having worked at the same vets that Nicola Bully had attended with her dog and had the number of the vets, my vets, at on Willow's dog tag. Like what I'm even wondering is this the same vet that Penny Fletcher had rang? Like it all seems very strange. At least with these parents here, you can forgive that they don't even speak the language. They needed a translator. And they probably didn't even know what was going on there at that inquest to be able to speak up or say, well, hold on a minute, like, why would my 30-year-old daughter do something like this to herself so severely, like a violent death? And be talking about a gang following her when... She was in a, her dream job and after getting a pay rise and was so happy. Like you can forgive these parents, you know, from a different country, didn't even know what to do. But at least with Nicola's family, they knew the language, they knew to be able to speak up like there's something wrong here. Also, I didn't see anything from her, her workmates or anything, you know, being called up to ask about her mental health or what way she had been in her job. Like, it seems strange that they didn't even look into any of that stuff. Like, was there something? Was she getting harassed in work or anything like that? But they didn't even bring anybody up to talk about that. To me, this seems like another whitewash of an inquest. You know, like, it worked out even in their favour, the fact that her parents couldn't even speak the language to fight for their daughter. Like, we know what corruption and all that sounds like. And this does sound a bit like that as well. Corruption and whitewashing. Like here you have a 30 year old woman in her dream job. After getting a pay rise. Shopping for new furniture for her new flat. 
happy, happy about her future. And then something like this happens. And to die such a violent death. And nothing said about drugs or... Like to inflict those injuries on yourself without any... You know, stuff to help with pain and stuff like that. And to keep inflicting those injuries. This all seems... Like there's something going on. Like how many coincidences, even the relation to like Nicola Buddy case, like how many coincidences can there be? Like missing people and death seems to follow the family. Like it's all very strange. I'm going to leave it there now, like, Jesus, your head would be wrecked with all the stuff that goes on around there. Like, and the amount of women that are, no, just women, men and women going missing and then found dead, no suspicious circumstances. I just seen another woman, her body was found. She was missing five days. Um, a Blackpool woman, Yvonne Cheston. Um, they found her body um, and no suspicious circumstances either. I just said I'd tell you now because that information just after coming in there now. Like it's sad. Rest in peace to all the people now that's after dying in all that area. Like it's it's quite shocking really. So I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye for now. Be safe, be happy. No virus eyes.